Hello, these four warm-up exercises are fun and effective. They will help you work on harmony and technique. To learn these, it will require a little bit of patience in the beginning, but once you understand them, they will become much easier. I will include notation, but I recommend learning some of the theory. This will help you out tremendously. Let's get started. Here's the first exercise, which I call parallel flickers. Here it is slowed down. First, learn these chords. We have a classic 2-5-1. Then learn it in other keys. This is where I would try not to use the notation. Try to figure out how the chords are put together. Now using fingers one and two, play this major third. While holding on to a third on the bottom, play notes on top. Follow the chord changes. Now with fingers three and five, play this major third. Keep the notes held down while using fingers one and two to play the notes on the bottom. Keep in mind that the held notes will not always be thirds in this case. Now let's try playing these pairs with gaps. Play these as slow as necessary. Gradually increase the repetitions. Next, add the left hand root notes. Then play the full left hand chords. Try playing these with your fingers lifted as high as possible. By exaggerating this movement, you'll start to build strength in your fingers. But of course, I would not overdo it, and if there is discomfort, make sure to pull back. Now try playing all of this at a faster pace. Chances are that you might be holding on to some tension. Try to loosen up a bit, then try again while focusing on creating a more beautiful sound, and practice this in different keys. I'm gonna call this next one Sunny Side to Slide. Here it is slowed down. For this exercise, this major 7th chord is extremely important. To get started, play a major 7th chord from different starting points. Learn the bass line, which you'll be using finger 5 of your left hand for. Add in the notes of a major 7th chord to each one of those bass notes. I like to add a color note to this last chord here. So to this F major 7th chord, I'm going to add a G, which is the 9th. For each of the chords, we're playing some arpeggiated notes in the right hand, so let's get to know those. Here is the first one over C major 7th. Next, the notes over F major 7. Play those together. And now add the B flat major 7th chord at the end. Moving on to the A flat major 7th chord, keep in mind that we are now changing directions. Now the notes over the E flat major 7th chord. 
And now we add in the F major 7th chord to complete the phrase. Now try all of that together, and you're ready to play it from different key centers. I like to call this next exercise Cascading Beats. You might recognize it from a previous 251 warm-ups video I released a few years ago. First, learn these left-hand chords. They are widely spaced. Examine these notes over a D minor 7. They're going to make up the first part of this exercise, so make sure to pay attention to the spacing. Next, learn these transition notes. Mind the fingering, especially going from 1 to 4. Now you're ready to play this first run with the left hand. Now going in the other direction, learn these groupings. Try to look at each grouping as a chord. Next, practice the transitions. Pay attention to how the notes fit into the chord, which here is a G7 chord. At this point, try playing it over other chords, because if you're going to cycle it through different keys, this will come in handy. For now, let's go back to C major. And let's take a look at the next part. This phrase has a lot of turning, so I would try progressing note by note. This is a way that you can practice so much material. Start with a short set of notes, and as you're repeating it, add one note at a time. Now let's add the tail end of the phrase. Again, mind the notes in context of the harmony. Here again, try playing it over other chords. This next one is called Sparkling Ivy. Here it is slower. First, play these thirds. Now put them together as a chord. Play these notes separately. And now change the order like so. At this point, I would recommend learning these at different starting points. Now play this chord an octave above. Now break the notes apart. Repeat this phrase up an octave, so look at it as a pair of two chords played separately an octave apart. For the next part, play these thirds, look at it as a chord, now play the notes separately from top to bottom. Next, of course, learn these from different positions. Next, we're going to learn this transition here. Keep in mind that you'll be repeating that fifth finger at the top. Now, practice this transition, which goes from finger 1 to 5. Try it, of course, in different positions.
now let's try putting all of this together. Next, learn these left hand notes. I recommend following the fingering. Learn it in different keys. And now put it all together and practice it in different keys. Let me know which one is your favorite. Happy practicing and I'll see you in the next video.